Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be reviewing this early Imperial Roman by Victrix Limited and I'm also going to be going through my painting process and I'll be talking about how this how these models compare to other Imperial Roman models that are out there and just give a few thoughts on the historical accuracy and just how I feel about this new line of miniatures. So sit back and relax and let's paint this guy up. So I'm going to start off by base coating the skin tone with this uh, Indian shadow, which is kind of a plum red. And as I'm going over this model, I realize that Victrix really stepped up its game the last few years. The last model of theirs I'd painted were their plastic Republican Romans. And I wasn't too impressed by the detail. I thought that most pewter models, especially by companies like Aventine, surpassed the quality of those. But looking at this, especially the hands and the facial features, I think that this is perhaps the best sculpt out there when it comes to first century Romans. So as I'm layering up the skin tone, especially looking at the face and the legs and the hands, the quality of this miniature cannot be understated. I'm really happy that plastics are making more of an appearance in historical model lines. You know, usually they're only relegated to the big fantasy companies, and you really can churn out some really fine details. While I love pewter models, and that's when I first started painting, the hands and often the face around the eyes were often a little bit clunky, didn't look very lifelike. Um, and even the legs too, there wasn't much detail around the musculature, around the knee and the calf. And when you look at this guy, I mean, it's very realistic. It seems to rival the quality that you might find in like Games Workshop or Kingdom Death or any of the other top plastic producers out there now. And the fact that this is a historical model is fantastic. For a long time now, I found myself kind of skimping on my historical paint jobs. I tend to rush through them now because I feel that the models just aren't worth the time. I feel that uh, I would rather spend a ton of time on my highly detailed fantasy models by Kingdom Death, then spend four hours on a Roman that just wasn't quite there, sculpt-wise. So this model is fantastic. Really can't say how happy I am that, uh, that historical models are moving more towards plastic. I know some people might not be happy with that. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that love their metal, but just the detail is just incredible. And so here I'm just going to be finishing up the skin tones with some light skin tones, really drawing out those crisp highlights and details on the skin. And I'll also be going over just to blend it with a glaze of some flesh shade here, Reichlin flesh shade. And with that glaze, I'll be done and I'm pretty happy with how realistic the skin looks. And it really, the model did a lot of the work helping you. It really tells you where the highlights should go. So now I'm gonna start painting his armor using just the Vallejo Metal Colors Triad of um, steel and silver and I believe it's aluminum. And the armor here is what you typically associate with first century Romans. It's the Lorica Segmentata, which was used predominantly in the first century AD, especially during Trajan's campaign against the Dacians. And I think this might be one of the only complaints I have about the uh, the Victrix line of early Imperial Romans is that you only have this one set of armor. I know Hollywood has spread the idea that this was the only thing that Romans ever wore, but Segmentata was only used for perhaps a hundred years out of the long 2,000 year span of the Roman and Eastern Roman empires, and Romans predominantly wore chainmail and scale mail, especially in the East and none of those armors are represented in any of the early imperial boxes. I guess you could use the auxiliary boxes for chainmail, but other ranges, especially by Aventine, have a huge range of different armors. Also, other lines have a larger assortment of helmets and pila that the legionaries are carrying on all these models. They are using the classic Gaelic helm, which it might have been nice just to see a, a, a little variety. But other than that, the armor is just like the rest of the model, very well sculpted, lots of little details, especially on the helmet that you can pick out. Overall, very pleased 
But anyways, let's go and paint the tunic parts. I'm going to go for your traditional kind of yellowed linen look to uh, my Roman here. I'm go it's going to take quite a few coats of this kind of mustard color to cover up the really dark undershade of this model, and I'll kind of uh, layer it up to a bone white, having a little bit of that yellow show through. And here again, the detail on this model is amazing, especially the folds of this uh, this tunic here. There's a lot to pick out, a lot of detail that you can exploit to make your model look even more realistic. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to paint his kingulum here, which was uh, typical of Romans in the first century, that little belt with brass emblems that hangs down the waist. And as far as we can tell, it didn't really help you defensively. There wasn't, it wasn't going to protect you from a sword shot to the groin, but it's probably more of a status or rank symbol among the foot soldiers. And here I'm using the Vallejo's metal colors, it's gold and copper line, to, uh, to get that brass look to my kingulum there. And now I'm going to be painting all the leather and wood areas, starting off with this black brown. Then I'm going to be highlighting up to your normal kind of uh, reddish brown tint to my leather. Again, I'm really impressed by the detail even on this belt. You can see all these tiny indentations, which makes it a lot easier to paint on a lot of historical models. The belt is flat, and it's hard to really get some contrast on them. You have to spend a lot of time putting in your own details, which I think might be the highest compliment I can give Victrix is uh, it can make average paint jobs look great on these models due to all this detail. They do take quite a bit longer to paint than some of my other Imperial Romans that I've had, but I think the end result is definitely worth it. And here I am painting the pilum of the Legionnaire here, which was perhaps the most devastating weapon in the Roman Legionnaire's arsenal. You would throw these as the opponent advanced, hope it got stuck in the shield or even incapacitated someone if it managed to hit their flesh. And it would basically render a shield inoperable as that top bent as it went through the shield, resulting in your opponent having to throw away their really only defensive equipment. The foes of the Romans were very lightly armored and once they lost their shield, they were kind of toast. So the Pelum did a great job of cutting down the front ranks of enemies. And as we're continuing to paint here, they even got the baldric right. I've noticed on some Roman Imperial models, they have uh, they either don't have it a baldric, they just have them uh, a typical sword sheath off of a belt, which isn't accurate. So at least they are keeping up with uh, what is considered historically accurate right now. So now I'm going to be painting the scutum or the curved shield of the Roman here. And we do know that the Romans painted the backs of their shields, likely to help it from the weather, the elements keep it from warping. That's one thing that these curved scutum were susceptible to. That's why they always carried them in kind of a leather case. And these were amazing shields. They weren't strapped to your arms like you think of medieval shields. You held them on by the boss, which allowed you to use them very offensively. You could smash your opponents in the face with the boss. You could angle the shield to strike at knees and things. They were a pretty amazing offensive weapon, as well as protecting the Roman from basically the shins to the neck. And I'm just painting this a blue paint scheme since I will be using a blue transfer on the other side. Again, we, we're pretty sure this was pretty standard for Romans based on some evidence from Dura Europus that we have found. So there we go, and we'll just apply the transfer and we will be done. So here we go, we complete this guy in about two hours, which is uh, quite a bit more time I usually spend on historical models, but he turned out fantastic. I tried rushing his paint job several times in the process and I just couldn't do it. I just had to slow down and paint all the details. And I think I'll be ordering some more of these. They have uh, another box with some more dynamic poses than just this marching one that you see here. But anyway, I, th I think it's gonna give some of the other companies a run for their money when it comes to Imperial Romans. They're not all that cheap for being plastic, but the quality is there. If you want a little bit more variety in the equipment of your Romans, I think Avatine still has Victrix Beat, but when it comes to the quality of the sculpt, I think this surpasses really anything I've seen in historical miniatures other than another company that specializes in plastic V&V &V miniatures. They have some awesome Vikings and things. But anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this. If you're if you're thinking about getting into historicals, and especially Romans, check out Victrix. They have some really cool models, and I don't think you will be disappointed. Thank you for watching, and take care.